Voices are very strange things. My name is Harry F. I'm also known as Reaps 100. Um, I specialize in the cross section of voice technology and performance. I am interested in how the voice is changing on a global scale, but also how far can I push a human voice? I'm especially interested in new connections, not just culturally, but with technology. And it turns out voices can go pretty far. Earlier this year, I bounced my voice off of the moon. Um, the radio frequencies that did not hit the moon continue to fly out into space at the speed of light. And as much as I love the poetry of that, the fact a voice can travel, I'm more interested in more worldly challenges when it comes to the human voice. It's a really strange idea that something as old and primal as the voice can change and evolve. But on average, we only use about 20% of our vocal capacity. And if you think about how often we use it, our loved ones, our relationships, the way that we connect to each other, that's quite a low number. And are we missing out on a fundamental? So when you look at examples of voice innovation, there's been an explosion in voice culture, you find something quite interesting. So after me, everybody in the room, I want you to sing back the three notes that I sing now. Dum, dum, dum. So this time I want you to do the exact same thing again, but just in your mind. Dum, dum, dum. What is that? It's strange. It's there and present all the time, but we give it little thought. One more time, just in your mind. Dum, dum. <laughs> the chances are you did not do the third sound, which is a very odd thing because in our minds we are free. Our imagination is open. Anything can happen. But that's not the case. Our minds are anchored in our body. To push the voice is to push the mind. To speak and shout and scream and express has a direct impact on the way that we think. So what are some clear examples of brand new things happening in the world of voice. And I would like to hand over to my collaborator, an incredible neurologist at UCL, Dr. Sophie Scott. We're about to head into UCL neurology department to meet Professor Sophie Scott. Sophie Scott is a person that I met a number of years ago after the second UK Beatbox Championships. I had just won for the second time, which was an amazing moment for me. Uh, and I was soon met with these two individuals. And the first thing she said to me was, I want your brain. And that was the beginning of a journey, collaborating with UCL, investigating my brain and how it works whilst I perform. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Now I understand you've got some new stuff to show me. I'm very excited. Yes, yeah. I have uh, actually a few different techniques as well from stuff you've seen before. I'm curious no. to actually experiment a little bit. I'm a cognitive neuroscientist and I'm particularly interested in uh, how our brains deal with communication and particularly with our voices. Well, I didn't realise I was interested in the voice. I thought I was looking at speech and for many years I worked on speech and then just started to realise that it was just one thing that we do with our voices and our voices are more than speech and our voices are musical instruments and our voices convey emotion and identity and all this kind of social information as well as speaking. I used to say that human voice is the most complex sound in nature and then I, you know, Harry made me realise that we are doing the bare minimum with our voices when we talk to each other and they're capable of so much more. So we've done a few different investigations of Harry's voice. One of them is looking at actually how he uses his breathing. So I've been a part of a number of different voice studies now, um, which I'm very proud of. Um, but there are two very simple takeaways from these. Um, the technique that they're monitoring here is something I call 
do called the inward drag. And it sounds a little bit like this. So regardless of if you think there's any musical content in that, um, I currently have the fastest recorded use of the human diaphragm. And uh, again, on a motor function level, that's very strange that after all of this time, new things can happen in the voice. We can actually push our fundamentals further. The second takeaway was the uh, expert behavior study I was a part of. So what does expertise look like on a neurological level? And the voice and what I do is a perfect testing ground for that. They compared me performing to a number of different controls. And with myself, there was a hyperactive localized activity whilst I perform, much like when you speak a fluent language. So a really simple way to describe that is, again, when you're speaking with fluency in your native tongue, there is this strange immediacy, this non-stammering of concept where you feel, you interpret, and it is expressed instantly. When you are not fluent in the language, you um, you are, ah, you think, you go through the file of your mind, you find what you want to say, and shh, it leaves. There's an absence of flow. We are designed to be experts with our voices. You all display expert behavior with your voices. It is built into you. So to not explore that is a crime. <laughs> and we have many distractions these days, don't we? So this really informs my work. I love to engage with research and take it into installation, performance, displays, spectacle, to try and make people think about things that maybe they don't often engage with. So this led me to a project called C-Sound. C sound is a digital vocal sculpting tool. And what it does is it reveals the unique fingerprint that is a human voice. Yes, I can use it in this absolutely crazy way, um, but I'm more interested in when the general public use it. So it's a collaboration with Rama Allen, um, incredible creative director at The Mill, New York. And we opened it up to several hundred people. And there was one happening, which I think was a huge lesson for me in my career and my journey. There was a very small young girl who was like a koala bear on her father's leg. Very shy, didn't want to talk to anybody. And when she used C-Sound, her voice started with tiny utterances and as she saw it manifest, screaming, shouting, expressing, she flowered, she opened up. She discovered her voice. And that augmented relationship with a piece of technology made her more human. It made her rediscover her voice. And all of these pieces were made by the general public. And I think they're beautiful. So with that experience, I think there was a very wholesome thing that manifested, but I'm interested in more. How can vocal experimentation help young people speak? My name is Harry. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really excited to meet you all. Uh, I've come to see how you guys beatbox, how you make music. Who wants to um, warm up on the microphone? Because I would <laughs> love to hear what you guys are doing. Yeah, 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 my friend, you take this. I'm good. I'm I like to dance. I like to dance. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Remy. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Oh. No. What do you mean? Yeah, you got it. You are crushing it, man. You've been practicing so much. Every time you come back in the summer, you have you totally want, awesome new sounds. Do you want, no. Should I start? Oh. Yeah. Yes, you want to start? Oh. Hey. 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 So 
So in that clip, what you see is an amazing place called Lavelle School for the Blind in New York. They provide services for a number of different special needs, but this young gentleman is called Remy. He's taking part in a class run by Beat Rockers and Kayla Maldi and Mark Martin, where they are getting these young people to go beyond their comfort zone. And as you could hear Remy, when he speaks, he struggles to articulate. But when he beatboxes, <coughs> there is an attack, there's a precision. And that's a really interesting idea. We can actually hack different systems of expression based on how we use our voices. So Remy is now speaking through something called beat rhyming where he speaks with percussion. Goodbye, Miss Kayla. And through that, his articulation improved. And now this idea is being implemented by a number of different speech therapists across the world. We can hack ourselves to express in new ways. So what is future-facing ideas of a voice? What is a future voice? I was asked to create a piece which engaged with generative voice and machine learning. How can we actually use art to make people up to date with contemporary technology? Machine learning is here, augmentation is here. So how could I use a technology like that to push my voice further? Second self is a live back and forth interaction with a second voice generated with something called sample RNN. The voice you're about to hear is not me. She sees. So I just want to this right there. And this uh, is me. Um, they um, are most nice in a form. So this is just, and so this is them. So, uh, so that uh, this. Bizarre. <laughs> so this Bizarre. When I first heard this, the idea that I can create a data set which I can use to create a whole new way of interpreting and hearing what I do, a mirror, an introspective process, I saw that as beautiful. And that is not how people see this technology. But I believe there is a future where we can take our data, the way that we express, and use technology as a mirror which allows us to see ourselves and become more what we want to be, to be more human. And that is not a narrative we have around technology. So how could I directly apply this? This data set was based off my speech, but I, of course, make many other sounds. Um, so I created a data set with my extended techniques. So the generative audio started to perform. It started to do phrases that I have never done. I heard my hyperspecialism, where before there was only one of, speak back to me in a way that I never have. And I thought that was stunning. At first, the phrases uh, were so complex, I could not keep up, and it made me cry a little bit inside. Um, but in the same way a chess AI will push and is developing game theory, we can use machine learning to push us in any way that we want. So using a mosaic system which sieved through the hundreds of hours of generative voice that we made, I could play phrase chess with myself. And it sounded a little bit like this. So I have grown, I've become something more on my own terms, with my voice, with technology. And that's the type of ownership that I think we can have. We can go beyond with our voices,
but we can also go beyond with how we augment with the world on our own terms. So here's a very short clip of the final piece uh, which was there to display this type of relationship called second self. We must go beyond our comfort zones with our voices. My job is to push it as far as it goes. But for you, you must think about how it feels, the tone, the resonance. Sound making predates language. 20% of your vocal capacity is not enough. If we can raise that number globally, we can improve the well-being and connectivity of the entire planet. You must scream and shout your ideas. On the count of three, I want you to shout as loud as you possibly can. One, two, three. <laughs> I'm Harry Yev. Thank you very much.